All right, welcome back guys. Uh, this will be the second part of this video series on fixing the Dakota. Um, got it staged here in my my lift area to pull the engine and just getting it kind of torn apart here so we can figure out what happened. Anyway, I'm still going to pull the head first, I decided, and just want to get down to the carnage as quick as I can. So I'm just about ready to pull the head here. Um, checking the top end there. As expected, nothing looks abnormal there. So can't say I will really know what's going to be underneath until I get it pulled out. So might as well just get right to it and, and get this head off. Okay, well the the verdict is in. I'm gonna go ahead and hop up here and show you one piston at a time Kind of go over what what it looks like happened So looking at cylinder one here kind of scratch some of the stuff off of the The bowl there you can see but right in there. You're seeing the cracking that's starting on the pistons and That is definitely a sign of heat and if we roll it around here, number two, that was number one. Number two's got the same stuff. Almost cracked all the way, all the way across over here. But what stopped me was number three. She split right in half. So, and if we go back down with it, it's got all kinds of aluminum there on the cylinder wall. Interesting, number four has no cracking at all. But that is what what killed me there. Um, and so just looking at spray patterns on the injectors, you can see them pretty well there on number two. Um, I don't think that this was an injector issue. I'm going to go ahead and pull them out and test them. But heat across all the cylinders like that definitely just points to running the engine too hot. Um, the, the EGT is over 1300 sustained and um, coolant temps over 220. I mean, I know a lot of guys don't think 230 is that hot. But when you're throwing that those kind of EGTs through the cylinders... And then the oil running hotter than the coolant normally i've monitored these vews quite a bit and with the stock oil cooler like what i'm running if you let the coolant get that hot which i knew better and i did it anyway um that will lead to over 250 degree oil temp <clears throat> and so all those temperatures combined are what crack these pistons so that is where we're at there. So I've pretty well got the the accessories and everything all pulled off to the side. And as you can see, I would still rather blow up this thing than anything else because that bell housing and the bolts out there like that, I can take this thing out in minutes. It's crazy. So at the end of the day, you got to live and learn somehow. But definitely got to keep my coolant temps down. And I think I'm going to go with a different turbo, possibly compounds down the road. I'm going to put a smaller turbo on it for now um, that still can handle as much boost as I was running. Because the bigger turbo on the same amount of boost was leading to too much lag. And adjusting that thing is actually what ended up getting me those EGTs so high. So... I'm going to go ahead and play with it, and you guys can watch what I end up with, but this thing's definitely going to need board out to clean up that cylinder. So, probably just going to redo the whole, whole bottom end on it, but I'm not going to rush into that right now. So, I've got quite a few engines here to choose from, but this block here um, was pulled off. Pulled the head off because of uh lost a lifter and wrecked it so the head was junk on this one anyway so it's a perfect candidate for swapping this out gonna get it all cleaned up 
and throw it back in. Um, it's pretty much identical. So shouldn't have any issues there. Just a lot of swapping over parts. But get this guy pulled out and see what it takes to get that other one put back in. I am the cameraman for his engine removal. So it looks like he's shaking the engine. Oh. And now he's pulling on it. Or whatever he's doing. Oh, there it goes. He is shaking the engine. Oh, that, was that a socket or what was that? Who knows? And the engine is starting to get lifted out. And the very top of the engine is above the radiator cap. Uh, that that light's gonna fall. All right, so pretty much just gonna be swapping parts over, but I am seeing more things I need to order that I like to replace while I'm at it. So. Might be a little bit more involved switching this over than I was originally planning, but I did want to go over, I forgot, somewhere along the line, I wanted to go over the turbos and a different one I'm going to use here. Um, we do already have quite a bit of um, experience with this. This is a GTC 1549. It's, as you can see, much smaller than than the GTD. 2056 turbo I took off um, but just not getting the spool up that I wanted with this thing and the automatic um, I have a GTB 2056 in the Jeep and I don't know what it is about this one but I've got the veins adjusted to be just about completely closed and it's still just not wanting to spool up at that 1600 rpm mark where the um the torque converter on the aw4 in the dakota it only really slips up to there and so with how big this thing is i'm just really needing to get some boost by then and so i think i think this GTC 1549 is probably going to be too small for the top end. But I want to experiment with it a little bit and just see how it takes off. And it's probably going to end up needing another turbo on top of it. Something like um, something like a Cummins, more like a stock Cummins turbo to, to even that thing out and make it more perform like the 2056 would on its own but get me the spool up of the smaller turbo so anyway i've got a that's like a euro manifold to go to it very similar to the bhw manifold um you do have to adjust a little so this actually came with if i've got it here this is the manifold it came with off of the the newer 2.0 TDI so they almost match but they're just a little bit different the the bolt spacing so you got to modify oval out the bolt spacing on that turbo and then it bolts right to there and we're going to go ahead and throw that on just as a single for right now and see 
just see how it performs. Um, we have it on the the Chevy, and I don't have a whole lot of first-hand experience with it. Uh, my brother-in-law kind of just gives me a little bit of information here and there. But I'm excited to get to try it out myself and see how that thing does because having close to 30 PSI of boost capability in that small of a turbo just really makes for um, a really good low-end performing turbo. So we will get this thing all put back together. And I guess let me know. Um, kind of plan on just throwing it back together, but I can keep videoing stuff if if you guys are interested. Obviously, my son there likes to get some of the videoing done to help out, so just let me know in the comments what you guys think.